Salutations! Today's video is on the current state of the MCC's modding scene. We recently got our first official form of mod support in the form of Halo Custom Edition map compatibility, but we still have an extremely long road ahead of us before we have all the necessities needed for the MCC mod scene to gain more traction. Currently, we only have fan-made tools such as Assembly and Reclaimer, as well as Forerunner's Model and Texture Importer, and while they're really good at what they do, they're held back by various limitations that the community can't really work around. In this video, I'm going to go over the brief history of modded content on the MCC and how they were made, along with the advancements achieved during that time. After that, I'll talk about the new Custom Edition map compatibility and what it means for not just all of this classic modded content, but for Custom Edition content creators going forward. Furthermore, I'll discuss the fundamental features the MCC needs as soon as possible before anything else related to mod support is released. Finally, I have to bring up the latent potential of Halo mods as a whole within and beyond the MCC, and what can be accomplished if 343 and Microsoft give the community the right support. Let's begin. Halo Custom Edition and Halo 2 Vista are the only two Halo titles so far to have been given official modding tools from the developers in the form of the Halo Editing Kit. The Halo Editing Kit includes the following. First, there is Tool, a command line utility which is used to compile various assets into other file types, with examples including scenarios into map files, TIFFs into bitmaps, and JMS files into models just to name a few. Next is Gorilla, which is a tag viewer and editor much like Assembly. And finally, there's Sapien, a scenario editor that includes a game viewer, allowing users to accurately edit their scenarios and see them being ran in the game engine. Such tools will not have official Xbox counterparts, which makes sense given how strict Microsoft tended to be towards modded content on their console platforms. The Xbox versions of Halo 1 and 2 at the very least had a wide selection of fan-made tools for modders to utilize, and shortly after Halo Custom Edition dropped, there were conversion tools made such as Arsenic that converted custom edition maps into OG Xbox maps so long as they were compatible of running on the OG's hardware. Halo 3 and the other 360 titles, on the other hand, did not receive the same treatment. Sure, there were mod tools such as Adjutant, Ascension, and eventually Assembly that enabled modders to make changes to the 360-era Halo maps, but the capabilities that the first two games had, including importing completely new models and maps, just wasn't possible with Halo 3 and onwards. This meant that modders were mostly just limited to tag editing. Fast forward to MCC PC's release on December 3rd, 2019, and the modding capabilities were mostly the same as they were for the 360 Halo titles, with Assembly being the primary map editor in the beginning. However, the arguably biggest difference compared to modding on 360 is a significantly larger audience. The modding community on the Xbox 360 was, and still is, a way more niche scene which required users to purchase a modified console or a dev kit to run modded content. Compare that to a basic PC that doesn't require any specific hardware and software modifications to play mods, the barrier of entry to play mods on MCC PC was much easier to break through. This also means more players had the chance to play other people's creations, which meant more feedback to take into account when making improvements for future updates, as well as just having more opportunities to play mods with friends if they supported multiplayer. Being a new game meant that the tags inside these PC map files would receive updates from the developers as well, such as additional view model settings for weapon tags as well as new armor pieces for Spartans. However, this was effectively a double-edged sword, and I'll explain why a bit later. As time went on, more additions to assembly as well as more fan-made modding tools were released. Before 2020, we weren't able to import sound tags from one map to another while using assembly, but as of July 2020, this became possible meaning we can hear sound effects on maps that didn't have them before. Assembly also included a script compiler shortly after, which made creating and editing map scripts a much faster process. A new tag editing program titled Reclaimer released as well, which offered a plugin that could view and edit map scenarios. One more notable example is Forerunner's Model and Texture Injection Tool, which finally allowed creators to implement completely custom model and texture assets to their maps, with support currently for Halo 3 and onwards. At the time of me writing this video, this is where we're currently at regarding modding capabilities for each of the MCC titles, with the exception of Halo 1, which just recently acquired its first bit of official mod support from 343. Season 6 introduced soft Halo Custom Edition map support, 
This is great for accessibility as it's rather hard to find a legal copy of the Gearbox Halo PC port these days. Plus the MCC has more active players. Unfortunately, not every custom edition map is going to work properly on MCC. Maps that require external tools such as OpenSauce and Chimera won't work, so projects like SBV3, Halo Minecraft Edition, and the Grapplehook mod are not compatible. Even normal maps that don't need the aforementioned tools to load can be incompatible depending on how those maps were developed, such as multiplayer maps like Cold Snap that have custom scripts that make MCC freak out and crash. While having custom edition map support for MCC is a nice treat, the current experience with these maps is a shadow of its former custom edition self. I've already talked about how a lot of the maps won't work, but there are other issues too. It can be tedious to set up these maps to be used on MCC because the main menu doesn't currently support new map entries, so we have to replace existing map files with the custom ones that are renamed to the map file being deleted. Custom Edition itself also has a dedicated server browser, and while MCC is slated to get a custom game browser of its own, MCC just doesn't compare to what Custom Editions offers. The big one is the fact MCC's browser requires easy anti-cheat to be enabled in order for players to access it, which means modified maps are off the table. In Custom Edition, players who set up dedicated servers can have them running for however long they want, even when the host isn't in the actual session, while also including various custom scripts to enhance the experience for players. One more prominent example is automatic custom map downloading. OpenSauce and Halo Anti-Cheat 2 offer the ability for players to download any maps that the players don't have when they join a server. All of this I find to be really disappointing, because I just recently announced that my Halo Reach Evolved mod is going to include multiplayer support. The only way myself and other players can play this mod is through standard custom games, and all of the players inside the session, which I have to manually invite, will have already needed to have downloaded the necessary files prior to joining. This is much more tedious than it needs to be. I'd gladly pay a monthly fee to set up a dedicated server to run my evolved multiplayer maps 24-7, so there's consistent opportunities for players to enjoy my mod, and I'm confident that other modders who have made multiplayer mods in the past will agree with my thoughts. It sounds like a good way for 343 to gain an extra source of revenue in my opinion. There is one advantage that the MCC ran custom edition maps do have over the actual custom edition game, and that is co-op support for single player maps. Not all maps can flawlessly support a co-op session, but those that do will provide an extremely unique experience that hasn't been seen before on these maps. The reason custom edition maps back in the day didn't have co-op support are twofold. The original Xbox version of Halo 1 used a lockstep setup for its multiplayer netcode, which means every player in the session will see exactly what the host player sees. This came with the cost of input latency for the client players, which means whenever they press a button on their controllers, it takes a variable amount of time for that information to be sent to the host's console. The Gearbox PC port, on the other hand, used an asynchronous connection for multiplayer. All of the players in a match didn't have to worry about the latency anymore, but there's a catch. Clients do not see everything that the host sees, and a prime example of this is AI. A lot of custom edition multiplayer maps back in the day had AI placed on them, but playing multiplayer sessions on these maps generally weren't a good idea, and here's an example as to why. This is a session a couple of my friends and I were in, and we played on a Blood Gulch mod fill with a bunch of Hunter AI. As you can see, when all of us are standing in the exact same spot, the AI are not synchronized with everyone in the lobby, and we're all seeing different scenarios being played out. But because Halo CE Anniversary introduced online co-op, which uses the synchronous lockstep networking setup, AI will sync with both players in a session, allowing for a consistent co-op experience. Fun fact, because the original Xbox version of Halo 1 uses lockstep for multiplayer, if players are land tunneling, AI will actually sync on modded maps with AI bots in them. All of this means that custom edition map creators can either go back to some of their past projects and modify their maps to provide a better co-op experience, or they can build entirely new missions from the ground up that factor in co-op much better. This also applies to the multiplayer maps. Creators can construct their maps in a way that perfectly conforms to the MCC framework. Really exciting stuff ahead of us. Learning how to mod Halo has probably been one of the best ventures I've gone through as a fan of this franchise so far. Not only do I have a much better understanding of how the Halo series works on a technical level, but can also craft experiences that are to my liking. 
Seeing my projects take shape over time is an incredibly satisfying experience for me, and I can safely say the journey to a mod's completion is my favorite part of making Halo mods. However, the overall process of producing and maintaining modded content can be handled much better. To put it quite simply, we need official mod tools ASAP. I know we just recently got custom edition map support as our first form of official support, but the momentum needs to keep building. We can't waver. We cannot stop now. I understand that 343 is currently prioritizing getting the games on MCC PC as functional and bug-free as possible, but I feel a few bones can be thrown to the modded community. The good news is that Season 7 is now confirmed to come with mod tools for Halo CE, but like I said, the momentum needs to keep building. Halo Infinite is just a few months away at the time of this video's posting, and I'm afraid of the idea that mod support for the other Halo titles after CE will be released too slowly. I can't imagine many people are going to want to stick around on the MCC immediately post Halo Infinite's launch. I'm surely not, and I can imagine many of the other regulars in the modding community won't either. I just hope it won't be too little too late for these non-Halo CE tools. One of my biggest problems with modding on the MCC right now has to do with the seasonal updates that provide new content to certain Halo games. Don't get me wrong, seeing new and official assets being introduced to these games is an amazing thing, and I don't want to downplay that in any way. The problem that comes with this though, is that older map mods are likely to be incompatible with the newest MCC updates, rendering them unplayable. For a while, the workaround to this was to keep a copy of the share.map file from the previous update and package it with the older mod, and as long as both files are from the same update, they'll work with the new season when you replace the existing shared map. This can be a tedious process because this forces players to have to keep track of the original files lest they want it to be stuck re-downloading the entire game just to regain access to that missing file. Thankfully, there's a new workaround for some of the more current Halo Reach mods where you can rename a share.map from the previous update to something like mainmenu.map, english.map, spanish.map, etc. And as long as you link that renamed share.map with the modded map's zone tag, it'll work with the new update alongside the current share.map meaning you don't have to replace anything in the maps folder. However, a new season can change so much that their share.map file replacement method will be rendered completely useless. This causes mod creators to have to scramble and make their mods work for the new season, if that's even possible. And depending how complex the mod is, it could take a very long time for these mods to get back up and running. And I can assure you not everyone wants to be forced to restart their work over and over again. I can imagine a workaround for this will come when 343 releases mod tools for these games, but in my humble and honest opinion, an official tool or some other method that aids in mod preservation between seasonal updates should be top priority above all else. Many of us have spent hundreds if not thousands of hours producing these mods, and it's a scary prospect that all of our hard work would be for nothing depending on how the new season is implemented. I understand that the current rendition of MCC modding is considered unofficial at the time of this video's posting, but if 343 is serious about implementing official mod support to the game, and supporting the Halo mod community, they should at least acknowledge the effort that we've been putting into our project since MCC PC dropped almost a year and a half ago and help us preserve our hard work. Again, I'm expecting this function to come with the rest of the official toolkit, but I think giving the community the ability to convert our modded projects to work with the newest seasons ASAP will boost morale and give MCC modders the incentive to continue doing what they love. Speaking of the official toolkit, I'm going to go on a brief tangent to mention that 343 has confirmed in the MCC ULIS Frequently Asked Questions page that their tools will be in a Git repository, and this will mean the official tools could be approved upon and received additions from the modding community. I can imagine there will be tons of different forks for each of the new tools that offer a wide variety of features for the community to utilize. I posted a question on Twitter recently asking what the community would like to see included with official tools. Some of the answers I received will naturally come with the official tools if they're anything like Halo Custom Edition's Halo Editing Kit. But there were a few answers I saw that suggested things that don't currently exist in official or fan-made mod tools for Halo. So if the wizards in the community want to try to implement some of those into the newer official tools in the future, that'd be really sweet. Moving on, 343 recently released an End User License Agreement, or EULA, for the Master Chief Collection, and it talks about the legal foundations for modding within the MCC. In the Frequently Asked Questions page for the EULA, it even mentions how Steam Workshop integration will be coming to MCC at some point, which is a huge plus. I understand that a second version of the EULA is currently being written up, but myself and others in the modding community feel there are way too many gray areas within the EULA and this Frequently Asked Questions page that need to be addressed as soon as possible. 
I'll be talking about an example of this regarding the VKMT crew that I'm a part of in our custom edition project Halo CE+. For a while, many of the weapons featured in the mod used art assets from the MCC's Unreal Engine 4 menu, such as the updated default textures, shaders, weapon skins, etc. Nowhere in the EULA or in the Frequently Asked Questions page does it mention that we couldn't use those assets, but I've received word in a Discord server that this was indeed the case. Using assets from the menu is actually prohibited, or at least for custom edition maps. It's a good thing I found out about this when I did, because had we released CE Plus with those assets, we could have found ourselves in serious trouble. We figured because the main menu is within the MCC that it would be fair game to use them, but apparently it isn't true, and we are now forced to remake a bunch of our assets from scratch. It just would have been nice if this was actually talked about in the EULA somewhere, instead of me having to find this out in a private Discord server of all places. There are a couple of questions in the Frequently Asked Questions page that I want to single out. One of these questions is, can MCC mods use assets from other 343 Industries games or Microsoft products? The current answer listed on this page is, only the assets contained within the retail version of MCC are allowed for use in modding efforts. At the time of this video, this is no longer entirely accurate, as Fornication, a 343 developer, confirmed in a Discord server that players are allowed to rip content from the Halo Wars titles, and none of those games are part of the MCC. Again, I understand that a second version of the EULA is coming, but for the time being, I think it would be a good idea at the very least to update the Frequently Asked Questions page so people don't have to scour for this kind of information. This also puts Halo Custom Edition maps in a bit of a grey area because they're now playable on the MCC. And many Custom Edition maps feature asset rips from a wide variety of other video games and other forms of media. So are some Custom Edition maps going to be blacklisted from MCC because of this? This could also apply to Halo 2 Vista custom maps if those end up being playable on MCC in the future as well. The other question I want to talk about is, can content from older builds of the game be reused slash added back? With the current answer being, as outlined above, any content that is part of the released version of MCC can be used in modding. While I understand where 343 is coming from with this one, it's still a bit saddening because this will hurt our efforts in content preservation for older Halo game assets. They did mention on this page that we'll consider releasing some unreleased content in the future to be used with mods, but there's no guarantee that it'll happen, and this type of content could be lost forever. As someone who especially loves talking about pre-release Halo content, which I extensively do in my full analysis of the Halo beta series, this is something I hope 343 reconsiders. In summary, I hope that the next version of the EULA is much less vague on a lot of these details. I know that wasn't 343's intention, but I need to remind you how stressful it can be to have to find out a lot of this information through outside sources. Moving on from the EULA, there's other key features that the MCC modding community would greatly benefit from. Something that I personally would really love to see is a console command prompt. This has greatly helped custom edition map makers over the years. You can do things like spawning specific items, view debug information, look at firing positions and trigger volumes during runtime, and even run specific map scripts to test to see if they work properly right then and there. I've talked about this already earlier in the video, but I can't stress it enough. We need mod support for the custom game browser. The reason Custom Edition was as revered as it was, was largely in part to being able to play all these modded maps with just about anyone in the world at any time. Let us disable anti-cheat while hosting these maps, and give us the option to ban individuals from the server that are cheating. This was how Custom Edition has done it since release. I can assure you that we're able to take care of ourselves just fine. Lastly, the MCC's main menu needs a massive overhaul, although I feel everyone at this point knows this. I think a mod section somewhere for the campaign, firefight, spartan ops, and multiplayer lobbies would be a nice way to include modded maps alongside their vanilla counterparts. As I said earlier, we currently have to keep the original map file names for our modded maps to load at all in the MCC. It's a tedious task to have to not only keep track of the vanilla and modified maps, but also have no choice but to keep backups of all of the vanilla maps so we don't have to re-download the entire game if we lose those files. Having the custom maps show up in the menu will also make it considerably easier to access the mods you want to play. Let us name our map files, place them in a dedicated modded maps folder, and be done with it then and there. I imagine this will come with Steam Workshop integration, but having dedicated sections of the menu for modded content will make accessing mods much easier, especially for newcomers. On the subject of maps showing up in the main menu, can we please switch to either a drop-down menu or have it like Halo Custom Edition and Halo 2 Vista's menus where we can scroll down a map list vertically instead of horizontally? It would make accessing maps and game types so much faster, especially on PC.
This chapter of the video has to do with listing more suggestions to make our lives easier when modding Halo, but the following points are concepts that are either likely to not happen anytime soon, or not at all. This would go even beyond the MCC, whether it's for Halo Infinite or other future Halo games after it. For starters, 343 and Microsoft need to finally embrace mod support for consoles. Personally, it breaks my heart knowing that console-exclusive players are unable to experience my Halo Reach Evolved mod, and I'm certain other modders feel the same way when it comes to the accessibility of their projects. I bet Rejected Shotgun would be elated if Xbox One and Xbox Series X players got the chance to experience his Extinction mod, or Crisp with their Halo 3 Zombies mod. I know it's been stated that this is something 343 is considering in the future, although they said it's a concept that will need to see heavy revisions to be properly implemented into the console platforms, but I can't stress enough how much of a game changer this will become for the Halo community if Halo console mods do become a thing. Now, I'm going to talk about something that I'm 99% certain will never happen, but I'm willing to take a chance with this one. I think Halo has a huge amount of untapped potential when it comes to modded content, but for the longest time, it's been held back by a whole host of limitations that the community has had to deal with since the Halo editing kit released in 2004. There's only so much that the Halo engine is capable of doing, this is pretty much the reason why we have extensions like Open Source for Halo Custom Edition that allows users to accomplish more than what is natively possible. Even with Open Source, you can't do literally anything you want. The engine in its current state can only go so far. This is where I'd like to reference another company. Valve is known for many things. Steam, the Half-Life series, the Portal games, the Left 4 Dead titles, and much, much more. But something that sets this company apart from many others is how much they supported the modding community. Some of the mods produced by this community during the Gold Source era would not only become famous, but would transform into household names in the future. Counter-Strike and Team Fortress are two iconic examples of this. Both franchises started off as fan-made mods, with Counter-Strike starting off as a mod for the first Half-Life, and Team Fortress being a mod for Quake back in 1996. The developers for both of these mods would eventually be hired by Valve, and the company would go on to commercialize these mods and turn them into standalone titles. The first Counter-Strike was met with high praise, and the franchise would become a household name, with future iconic releases including CS Source and CS GO. Team Fortress would become a modification for the first Half-Life, and be released in 1999 as Team Fortress Classic. And of course, Team Fortress 2 would be released with the orange box in 2007 and be met with an extremely positive reception from the community. Both franchises are still actively played to this day. Other examples of Gold Source mods include the following. Seven Co-op is a mod for Half-Life where players in a session work together to complete a wide variety of challenges and fun levels. Master Sword Continued is an RPG that features up to 8 player co-op, quests, various skills that players can train such as archery, hammers, and different sword types, and a wide range of maps that feature different RPG-themed enemy types. One more example is The Specialists, which is a multiplayer shooter that plays like a typical action film, like The Matrix and Face Off, featuring acrobatics, hand-to-hand -hand combat, a slow-motion power-up, and dual-wieldable weapons. In 2002, Valve released the Half-Life SDK. Like Halo Custom Edition's Halo Editing Kit, it came with various tools that allowed users to mod Half-Life, but more importantly, the SDK came with a portion of the source code for Gold Source. With these tools and source code, mod developers were able to accomplish much more than before, refining older mods with new features and creating brand new experiences altogether. This would continue with the release of the Source engine which succeeded Gold Source, and with Source came its own SDK for people to utilize. The Stanley Parable and Black Mesa are notable examples of games made from the Source engine that started off as mods. The Stanley Parable, which is an interactive game that progresses based on the choices players make, began as a Half-Life 2 mod, and would then go on to be its own standalone commercial title. Meanwhile, Black Mesa is a modernized remake of the first Half-Life game, and was made in response to Half-Life Source's less than stellar release. It started off as a free Half-Life 2 mod, but shortly after the 2013 version of the Source engine released, Valve themselves got into contact with the developers of Black Mesa to suggest turning the mod into its own commercially released video game with full access to the 2013 Source engine, which people needed to pay to have access to. It took a while for the developers to get used to the newer engine, but by 2020, 
Black Mesa's finished version was released to the public. So what's my point with all of this? With Halo Infinite supposedly being the last mainline Halo title for the foreseeable future, I think it would be a fantastic idea to offer licenses for the various iterations of the Halo engine for people to purchase. Whether it's Halo CEs, Halo 2s, Halo 3s, or even the new Slipspace engine. Just like how developers can choose between Gold Source in the 2006, 2007, and 2013 versions of the Source engine. Not only would this expand on what's possible with modding the Halo games, but this would open doors for entirely new games to be made with these Halo engines. I know that a decision like this would have to be approved by Microsoft, but in my opinion, this sounds like a golden opportunity for 343 to create a new source of revenue. For example, people could purchase a license for a fork of the Halo engine, and developers can work with 343 to have the game published or even co-developed under their umbrella. The only non-Halo game that I'm aware of that uses the Halo engine is Stubbs the Zombie, and it was recently re-released as a multi-platform game. So now we have an officially commercialized Halo engine ran game on PlayStation and Nintendo hardware. The 2007 Shadowrun game was also prototyped on a modified version of the Halo 1 engine, and while this level looks like something out of Halo Custom Edition, let me tell you right now that most of what you see on screen is not possible to recreate on Custom Edition maps, even with open source. What you see here was made doable with edits to the engine's source code. Currently, the Halo mods that have been released are comparable to the many Counter-Strike source server mods out there. These mods do significantly change the way the game is played, sure, but you're still playing Counter-Strike Source. The gameplay isn't different enough to really call it a completely new game. The same could be said with Halo mods. I'm not saying this to downplay the Halo mod community's efforts whatsoever, and this also applies to my own Halo Reach Evolved mod, which really is just a different way to experience Halo Reach. However, as I said previously, there's so much potential that's been lying dormant for almost two decades now. We're ready to make completely different Halo experiences, or even new video games off of this engine like Stubbs the Zombie. We just need the keys. And that's going to be it for this video. There's absolutely no way that I covered everything regarding what the modding community needs for MCC and Halo in general, so please leave a comment below what you feel is necessary for the Halo modding scene. I'm also going to try something new for the ending of my videos. With your suggestions on what you want for Halo mods, start your comment with hashtag what I want for Halo mods then follow it up with your submission. If, and only if, you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe for more Halo content from this channel, leave some comments to satiate that bottomless pit of an algorithm, and hit the bell icon to never miss an upload. Make sure to follow me on Twitter as well, as I frequently post updates there. This is the Ventral Vatum, and I'll see you on the great journey.